Hi. The 2020 wildfire season was among the worst that the United States has ever seen. I have some data here I've printed out and about 8.8 .8 million acres were impacted in 2020. Now that's about 2 million more acres than typically over a 10 year average. And it's about twice as much as what was impacted in 2019. So by any measure that you look at it, 2020 was a difficult wildfire season. And now we're facing 2021. And one thing that we've learned over the years is that perhaps wildfire smoke is more dangerous and more of a health hazard than perhaps we've thought before. So today we'd like to talk to Canfield's Western Region Molecular Segment Manager, Jennifer Webb. Now Jennifer lives out West, so she's very familiar with this and she's got a unique perspective and some ideas about how to mitigate the risk. So Jennifer, before we get started, you would introduce us to yourself, would you? Hi, Mark. Thanks for having me here. And yes, as you said, I'm the molecular or gaseous filtration segment manager for the Western United States and as well as Mexico. And I am based in Northern California, which is the heart of wildfire country, unfortunately. Part of my job, a big part of my job is to design filtration systems to contain gaseous contaminants that pose nuisances, but more often threats to people and processes and the environment. And increasingly, I'm getting a lot of requests to help design solutions for molecular or uh, wildfire filtration. And so this is a timely conversation because we're coming into that season. Before we talk more though, I did wanna correct one thing that you said, and that is that while those of us that are living out here in the West are significantly impacted by these devastating wildfires, the this the effects are not limited to that area in fact back in 2002 there were a smoke from a fire that occurred up in northern quebec whose particles were detected in some air sampling in baltimore that was over a thousand miles away and last year during the california and oregon wildfires some of the worst in history that smoke was carried all the way across the country and in New York and Boston and even Maine, they were experiencing some shrouding of the sun from that smoke. Well, yeah, good to know. Thanks for pointing that out. I, uh, I'm, right, I'm here in the Midwest, right, pretty much at the intersection of the two longest uh, rivers in the US, the Missouri and the Mississippi. So I'm a long way from the West Coast. Uh, but now that you mention, I do kind of remember a little bit about that. Uh, of that smoke and how it was impacting all across the country. So that's true. And that's a good thing for everyone to remember is you're not necessarily immune, regardless how far away you are. We can maybe sometimes we fall into that trap. But as you said, you're right in the middle of it. So I guess first off, um, maybe a little bit of a personal perspective. What's it like to live where you are in the point in, in the sense that it's so dramatic that the sky is different and, and there's smoke everywhere. What's that like for you? Because that's something that I don't experience. Most of the country doesn't experience it. What would you say about that? I would say it's, it's otherworldly. I mean, living in an area where I am, where it's sunny over 300 days of the year and usually blue skies, beautiful. During the wildfires last September, I was sitting at my desk, looking out into my front yard and it was a little bit hazy in the morning, could smell a little bit of that wildfire smoke, which unfortunately is kind of a common occurrence. But by two o'clock, the dusk to dawn landscape lights in my front yard came on. And it was as if somebody had put a yellow, I mean, an orange film over my windows. It was just unbelievable to see that almost no visibility in the sky. It was almost like, a, you know, some kind of a, Armageddon, it was horrible. And what was worse, as soon as I set outside for any, I had to you know, go outside to grab something, the immediate irritation to my eyes and the throat, and of course it was beyond a pleasant campfire smell. I mean, it was a stench, the amount of odor and just the irritation that, that we were all experiencing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a testimony. Like I said, most of us don't get to experience that and uh, that's something to hear. So. Um, since I, that was probably a very dramatic and uh, traumatic experience, but, and nobody wants to repeat that, but what are you hearing about this year's fire season? Is there any news about uh, the impact of this year? Is it going to be 
an average year, worse year, less than average? What have you heard so far? Yeah, unfortunately, it's not looking good at all for this year. Typically in California, we have our precipitation between November and usually by it finishes up by about March. And this has been an extremely dry season. In fact, 2021 is the fourth driest in recorded history. And as a result, our Secretary of Agriculture just last week uh, mandated that 50 counties in California are designated as primary natural disaster areas because of this drought. So on the heels of 2020's drought and an increasing number of these extreme heat waves, we're just teed up for what's gonna look like a really large and devastating wildfire season this year, unfortunately. Well, that's, um, that's too bad, that's rough to hear. Uh, let's shift focus here and let's talk about specifically about the smoke. So, um, and this is something we all should know. Again, as you'd said earlier, even I, 1, 1,500 miles away from the West Coast, this is something I need to be aware of. What is it specifically in smoke that makes it hazardous to human health? You, you know, what's interesting is one of the reasons I, as a molecular filtration specialist, get involved, one, one contaminant that we often deal with is odor. And a misconception is that the, the thing to deal with when you have a wildfire is the odor. And while it is a nuisance for building occupants, that isn't really what we need to be most worried about. What we need to be most worried about are two different categories of things. The first and the most important are fine particles. So about 90% of wildfires are comprised of particles that are 2.5 micron and smaller, or PM 2.5. And if you were to take a thousand of those 2.5 micron particles, it would fill up about a period at the end of a sentence. That's how small these things are. They will migrate into, you know, irritate the eyes, but more, most dangerously, I uh, migrate into your airways lodge themselves into your lungs and create irritation and shortness of breath. And it's very serious for people who have lung diseases and disorders like asthma and emphysema. And long-term exposure to these types of particulates actually has been linked to heart failure and premature death. The other type of contaminant that we have to be worried about are gaseous contaminants, not just odors, which are a gas, but these are contaminants that are toxic to human health. And of biggest concern would be ground level ozone, which is formed when the combustion gases from the fire react with the UV light from the sun, and then they create this dangerous ground level ozone, which is different than atmospheric ozone that protects us. Ground level ozone is also a lung irritant that can cause chest pain, and shortness of breath and dizziness, and also exacerbates asthma and emphysema. And to make matters even worse, the CDC has cited a few scientific publications that link wildfire smoke to COVID-19 symptoms being worse and the outcomes being more severe. That's, uh, that's quite a bit of uh, doom and gloom there, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. it, um, it, it, it sounds like, as you're saying it, um, uh, the smoke really attacks us uh, in, in two ways, uh, particulate matter, as you said, 2.5, and then the gaseous contaminants and, and the chemicals and things like that. Um, so I guess then let me ask you this, um, since this is your, your function and your job, what protections do we have? What, what can you offer? Well, the best protection is air filtration. And the way to address the particulate filtration is through MERV 14A or higher. So a MERV 14A will capture 75% of the PM 2.5, a MERV 15A will capture 85%, and a MERV 16A will capture 95%. And if a system can take it, the best defense is a HEPA filter, which I think we have all heard a lot about in the last year or so, but that will capture 100% of the PM 2.5. And then in order to capture the gaseous contaminants, these odors and ozones and other types of byproduct gases, you need a different mechanism. And this is my area of specialty, which is molecular filtration. And in this case, the right type of filter media is activated carbon or charcoal. 
And this mechanism is just a little bit different. In this sense, the molecules, which are a thousand times even smaller than the smallest part particles, will migrate on and into a really vast network of tiny pores on these little pieces of carbon and they attach themselves to that surface. And so you can have individual particulate and molecular filters or we also have a range of combination filters if there's a limited amount of space that capture the particles and that also address the molecular with a layer of carbon in there. And if you really want to beef up your ability to clean the air, particularly in smaller spaces like in residences or schools or in hospital rooms, I recommend an air purifier. And I personally can endorse the City M, which is a great filter because it also, the air purifier, it has a HEPA stage and a separate high capacity carbon filter. And I've even ordered my replacement filters coming up for the summer, but you know, that creates more circulation of the air and can really scrub out all those contaminants and make the indoor environment much more comfortable. Okay, great. So I had mentioned that it seems like smoke attacks us in, uh, with a two prong approach and you've got defenses for both of those, uh, those prongs. So you've got uh, particulate filtration, MERV 14A or higher for the uh, particulate matter, the PM 2.5. And then you've got some molecular filtration options for the, uh, for the gaseous contaminants, the molecules that are near the air. Uh, and then finally, as you mentioned, uh, the, uh, the city M, which is for a home. So a lot of these filters we're talking about oftentimes go in large commercial buildings and retail places and things like that, because sometimes your home unit's not capable of holding HEPA filters or some of the other units. But that's why, as you mentioned, you have a, a home air purifier that the, the Campbell City M. And of course, I have one right behind me here that you can't hear running right now, but I have the same thing. So that's a good defense. So it's almost like three prong approach uh, in that sense and that you can protect yourself um, um, from home. So uh, is there anything else that we should discuss about the uh, wildfire smoke maybe that we should be aware of that we haven't talked about? I guess the only thing I want to point out is that the use of all these filters isn't just for wildfire smoke. I mean, these are the same filters that we're using to clean up our air against things like vehicle exhaust. So, you know, these are these have multi-purpose functions, and I, I think that's important to to bring into the conversation. Oh, very, very good point. Very good point. It's uh, you protect yourself from the obvious risk of wildfire smoke. Uh, but everyday uh, common pollution that we're faced with every day is something these filters also have an impact with. Jennifer, thank you for your time. That's a lot of information. We certainly wish you luck out there and hope your sky doesn't turn orange and uh, appreciate the insight. And, and it's a good reminder for everybody, regardless of how far you are away from a wildfire, uh, wildfire because we're all gonna hear about it on the news. And when we do, we should all be prepared and take a look at what kind of home defenses and business defenses that we have in our offices and things like that. So Jennifer, again, thanks for your time. And that's a lot of uh, great information for everyone. Well, thanks for having me. And I really hope it's a non-existent or mild fire season, but if we don't get so lucky, I'm glad to know that at least we have some good solutions to keep us safe and uh, help us breathe easy.